Welcome to you guys house this morning. So glad to see all of you as we continue in our... Oh, we good? Denley, what are you doing? My, hello, hello. All right. Um, where was I? Good morning. As we continue in our season of Easter, we are uh, continuing in 1 John and our kind of sermon series of John Unfiltered. And so last week we looked at uh, light and, and darkness and, and that theme. Uh, but today we're going to look at life in between. Uh, and so this here and, and not yet uh, type language that, that John uses in, in chapter 3. And so we'll kind of unpack that uh, more as, as we continue to live in, in the resurrection of, of Jesus and how we are to live uh, that way. Uh, so we'll unpack that this morning. Uh, before we begin, let's begin the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this day that you have blessed us with, uh, to come together as, as family in your house, to grow in our faith and, and knowledge of who you are and how we are to, to live as followers of your Son who is resurrected. Uh, and we just continue to praise you for that gift of eternal life. Uh, and we look forward to that day when we are in your presence face to face uh, forever. Uh, but in the meantime, we continue to share your love uh, and, and gospel uh, to those that, that don't know who you are. And just continue to guide us as we continue to point people to you. And we just ask for your blessing on our worship this morning. We stay standing for our first hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful, and we have not always lived as your thankful and joyful people. We have indeed turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past. Blot out our sins, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we serve you in true faithfulness. Grant us steadfastness among all the changes of this world, and build your kingdom among us here, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, and grant you a victorious life on earth, and finally a triumphant life with him in heaven forever. As a call or name servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As well-loved Easter people, rejoice and be glad. You are free indeed. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. And so as we continue here in our month of April, uh, we are just reminded uh, of what John has called us to, uh, this new commandment. As, as Christ is risen, uh, we are to continually to, to love those that, that we come in contact with um, and, and share that just as Christ has shown us uh, that love that the Father has for us all. Uh, and so that as we continue this month, let us just say this verse uh, twice this morning. A new commandment I give to you. And one more time, a new commandment I give to you, that you will love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. John 13, the Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. The third chapter. While the lame man, who was now healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murder to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead, 
To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, And what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. This time I invite all children to come and join us for a children's message this morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. So um, today, I want to know if someone asked you, who are you, what would you say? Okay, you probably would respond with your name. What are some other things about you? What would you say? Maybe you would say, like, oh, I'm a third grader, right? Or I'm a soccer player, right? What are some other identities about you? What would you say? Have you ever had to say like, oh, I'm, you know, what? Oh, if you're Evan, you would say you're crazy. (laughs) Would you say that or would Ella say that about you? Yeah, you wouldn't say that. Maybe you would say, like, oh, these are my parents, and so that people would kind of know who you are, right? Yeah, there's a lot of ways we can identify ourselves. We could say, you know, I'm an artist or different things like that. So in the reading we just heard, the first verse said, see what kind of love the Father has for us, that he has called us children of God. So because of our baptism and Jesus' death and resurrection, we are children of God. Did you ever think of identifying yourself that way? Someone asks who you are, you can say that you are a child of God. And as children of God, we probably want other people to be children of God too, right? Yeah, we want, thank you, Lena. We want other people to know about Jesus' love so that they can be children of God too. So, how do you think we share God's love with other people? Do, do we all have to become pastors and DCEs? No. Can you imagine a church full of pastors? <laughs> be a little crazy. Um, No, but anyone can share God's love, right? You can share it through your words, you can tell people about God, or you can share it through your actions. Maybe someone's having a bad day at school, and you can sit with them, or you can help them if they're having trouble, and that is another way that you can show God's love. And maybe you can tell them that you are a child of God, and you know what? They might say, 
that they are too, or it might be a good opportunity for you to tell people about Jesus. You just never know, right? So this week, I want you to remember, maybe in happy times or sad times, or if someone asks who you are, to remember that you are a child of God, and that's probably your most important identity, right? More important than being an athlete or an artist or whatever grade you are in school. We are children of God, okay? So I want you to remember that. Let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for calling us your children. Help us to remember that identity and help us to remember to share your love with those around us. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up. Now, of respect for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to stand if you are able. I want to say the verse together. Alleluia. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Did not our hearts burn within us while he walked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay here in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. We with our next song in Christ Alone. Fiercest drought and storm. What? 
mercy and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives us that wonderful gift of eternal life with him forever. Be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this morning we continue our sermon series on, on the book of 1 John. And so if you came in and you grabbed one of the sheets with, with chapter 3, those first seven verses that we heard from the epistle reading, or if you want to open your pew Bibles to 1 John chapter 3, uh, we'll kind of dissect these, these verses uh, as we live in, in the resurrected life of, of Jesus. And so last week we looked at that theme of, of light and darkness, uh, although kind of two truths and a lie that, that John kind of gives us, uh, to hold on to that Christ has come, he has he, he is that light in this dark and fallen world. But as we know, we, we sin, and, and we are not to, to give in to that sin. Don't give in to that, that darkness, that brokenness of this world. But continue to share that light of, of Jesus. And so today we, we look at this, this theme here, this, this idea of life in between. And so John kind of starts off here in chapter 3 here of see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. And once again, John is pointing people, as we remember, John here is speaking uh, kind of over these heresies of who Jesus is and, and how, we, how the church has kind of gotten away from, from what the apostles were kind of teaching and so he again reminds them of what Christ has come to do, to, to share that love of, of the Heavenly Father. And that love is shown in his Son as he has come to, to die for the world, that that forgiveness of sins is upon all of us. And because of his death, because of his resurrection, we are called children of God. And this is now being said to not just the Jews, but also to the Gentiles. That everyone here is children of God. And, and so we are. But as John says here in, in verse 2, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. There's a, a saying in, in Lutheran theology, kind of a, a here and, and not yet, or, or now and, and not yet. And so we know that, that we are, are forgiven. We know that we have that gift of eternal life, but guess what? We are not there yet. We, we will not see what, what Christ truly is as, as a resurrected Savior. We will not see what it's like quite yet to see what paradise and, and perfection looks like. We are to, to kind of start to, to live that way. And so a, a lot of our life is kind of in between. Kind of, as I thought about, you know, summers for, for kids, am I a third grader, am I a fourth grader, what am I right now? For those that are engaged You've made that commitment, that promise, but you're not married yet. And, and so how do, we, how do we act? How do we get ready for that day when, when we do say I do and make that pledge and promise? You're, you're working and, and you're, you're, you're waiting for retirement. Unless you're a pastor and you never retire. Or you're, you're moving and you've already purchased your house, but you haven't moved in there yet. And so as, as you look at life, there's a lot of in-betweens. And how do you live in those in-betweens as you wait for that next event to happen? If you have kids, there are days when your, your children get along so well. And then three seconds later, they are on top of each other and pounding the snot out of each other. They love each other. It happens a lot between two of my kids that share a bedroom. But as, as, as children, as parents, we, we long for, for the time when, when they get along. For that is how a family should, should act. 
But as we know, we live in a fallen, broken world. There is dysfunction. Families don't act or behave the way they should be, the way that God has called us to. So that is what John, again, is reminding. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. No one abides in him, keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. This is the reality that we live in. We live in the reality of, of brokenness and, and dysfunction. And I think sometimes we as, as, as human beings kind of think that this is just how it is. And we get comfortable in dysfunction. We get content with that. But here John is reminding us that no, this is, this is not how we as, as followers of Jesus are to act. We are to strive for that world where, where things are, are whole and made right. So don't be content with dysfunction. Don't have the attitude that, you know what, I'm a poor, miserable sinner and I just can't do this, God. You know I'm a sinner. So I'm just going to continue to practice sinfulness. And this is the, the behavior that, that is going on within the church, within the, the people that, that John is, is ministering to. And here John again is pointing out that, that no. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning practices lawlessness. Lawlessness is sinning. Jesus appeared to, to take away sin, to live in that forgiveness and then to to turn about, to get away from that way of dysfunction. Show the world that we are different. Show the world what family looks like. And yes, families aren't going to be perfect. John here is also reminding us to, to live in that forgiveness. That when things don't happen the way they should be happening, when there is fighting, when there is that dysfunction, to repent. To turn about and to, to live how God has called us to live. The children of God are different. And that's the beauty, that's the identity that we have, and that's what John is reminding the people here. You are children of God. And not yet, but now. Okay, you have been baptized, you have, have heard the word, you know who Jesus is. So live that way. The world is broken. The world is in dysfunction. And as we know, we, we don't like that. And the world knows that as well. And so we get to be the, the ones who, who model that. And to be different. Yes, point people to what is to come. What we celebrated a couple weeks ago of the empty tomb and the forgiveness and eternal life that has been given to us, that we will see Jesus for who he is in his presence. Just as he appeared to the disciples in the gospel reading, we can touch his hands and his side and see that he is real. We will be with him. 
That hasn't happened yet. And in the meantime, we get to point people to to the Scriptures, to open the minds of of the world and to see how we are to, to live, not in dysfunction, not in disarray, but how God has called us to do, to live in that functioning world. So take those, those moments when, when everything is going right and strive for that. Don't go, it's never going to happen. And just be okay with that. I'm not saying don't be okay with that. That's not how I have called you to live. And model that. And don't let people deceive you. Practice righteousness. Because you are righteous. Because of Jesus. And so as we go throughout this world, as we minister to people, show people the love that the Father has for each and every one of us. Because God sees each and every one as his children. He wants his family to come home, to be here and there with him. Perfection, because that is what his son has done for the world. So let us model that to the world. Let us show the world how we are to function and the life in between. To give glimpses of what it will be like forever in paradise. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now continue in our service by joining together and singing our next hymn, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Let us stand if you are able. Join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again from the scriptures. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church, that the message of salvation may joyfully be proclaimed throughout all the world, and the forgiveness of sins be celebrated around the globe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world, that governments would be a source of blessing to those who are governed, and that oppression in all forms may be hindered hindered, bringing a sense of security and well-being in every place. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for ourselves in this amazing season of our Lord's great victory, that we may truly be Easter people all year long, radiating the light of Christ in our homes, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who serve us through their callings, especially those who deal with special challenges or dangers on a regular basis, including police officers, firefighters, and other emergency personnel. Also, we remember that at this time, the military forces of our nation, those stationed both at home and abroad, whose efforts serve to defend our nation in challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those with special concerns and needs this day, those who are hospitalized, those who grieve, the unemployed and underemployed, and the chronically ill and shut in. We especially pray for all our Trinity members who are listed in our bulletin and all others we name now in our hearts. Bless them with your presence, gracious Father, that they may have a sense of purpose in their lives and find strength and hope for each day. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we bless you for having placed into our lives faithful Christian people to guide us. We remember those no longer among us on earth who have completed their earthly races and have won the final victory in Christ. Lead us to follow in their way that we may rejoice together eternally with saints and angels. Lord Jesus, you give us so much to rejoice in, especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Lakin, Lynn, Bryn, Harper, Barron, Stacy, Adam, Teresa, Brian, Eric, Taylor, and Adam. We also thank you for your continued blessing upon marriages, especially to Lucas and Kami, who celebrate another year of marriage this week. Lord, in your mercy. Maybe seated during this time, we offer up our offerings. Uh, and as the offering plate is being passed around, uh, you can focus on our offering video uh, for this week.
His love has no beginning and no end. The love of God will always be with you. You are and have always been dearly loved. I invite you to stand if you are able as we come together and pray the prayer the Lord has taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let us join together in our sending prayer. Be reminded that the world lives in, in dysfunction, and, and we are called to, to bring people into to God's family, where there, there is that sense of, of love and, and forgiveness and, and hope that there is something far better that is coming. And so as we pray this prayer, think of someone who needs to hear that, maybe needs someone to, to come and walk alongside them who won't give up on them, and to show them that love that the God, our Heavenly Father has for them. And that they are His children. And so we pray, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. And love that soul for me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for Thee. Now receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us join together in singing our final hymn, Rise, Shine, You People. be seated for just a couple announcements. Just a few things to draw your attention to. Uh, we will have our quarterly voters meeting uh, in a couple weeks on April 28th, uh, so come and join us uh, for that. Uh, it's following Sunday school and, and Bible study. Uh, we're just going to kind of discuss as, as Emily is leaving uh, how we move forward with the, the youth ministry position. Uh, and then also we have that wonderful blessing that's been given to us uh, and some estate money that's been given to us. And so we're going to kind of talk about how we will uh, use that money uh, to continue to do ministry uh, for his people. Uh, so come and join us that, uh, for that in a couple weeks. Uh, we also, next Sunday is, is Emily's last Sunday, and so we will celebrate her. Uh, I know in the bulletin it kind of says after uh, Sunday school, uh, but because Emily does not love to be center of attention, we're going to give her a little break before she goes to a bridal shower. So we're going to do it right after um, uh, service, and that'll be during fellowship uh, for that. Uh, so come and join us as, uh, for that as we uh, just celebrate uh, the wonderful blessing that Emily has been to our congregation 
uh, these past five and a half years um, and, and give her Godspeed as she uh, goes off on a new adventure. Uh, also, the bridal shower for all women uh, next Sunday from 1 to 2.30 here uh, at church uh, for Emily, too. And um, that is all that I have right, for right now. I'll let Emily go. All right, just a few things to let you know about. Um, our women's Bible study is continuing to meet on Wednesdays at 10 and 6.30. Um, so starting next week, Pastor Brett will lead the study at 10 a.m. Um, the 6.30 study will continue to meet here and then go for a walk around Sabin. Um, so join us for that. Our women's service project is this Tuesday from 6.30 to 8. Um, we'd love your help to meal prep some meals for the school food pantry. Um, we have some raffle prizes out right now. Um, you can buy tickets for that, and all of the money will go toward the youth attending the youth gathering next summer. Um, you can buy tickets today through next Sunday. Um, so buy lots and buy often. Um, and then Senior High, we have Hangout tonight at 6.30. Carl, do you want to present this? To, you sure? It's staying in the family, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, do you want it? Who did have it last? Oh, yeah. Adam, you want to give it to your dad? Or? Yeah, you're okay. Well, it's staying in the family. Um, so, uh, even though UConn won, Purdue didn't lose when I wanted them to. So, Randy, you are our 2024 NCAA March Madness Bracket Challenge winner. Come and receive your, your trophy. Absolutely. You want to give a speech or anything? Or? Not really. No, <laughs> you don't have. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Also, uh, just a, a quick change. Uh, adult Bible study. Uh, you will be meeting here in the, the sanctuary for the next couple of weeks as the eighth graders have their first communion class uh, in the fellowship hall. So come and join uh, Bible study here. It's being led by, by Carrie and Bruce, uh, and uh, you'll continue in uh, that series uh, of life and chaos. Um, and so come and join us here. Uh, grab some stuff, and then you get to hang out with the, the Sunday school age kids as well in their little opening. So uh, have a blessed rest of your day. Uh, and, and as we live in that life in between, uh, let us look forward to that day when we are with him, but also continue to share with the world how we live as, as children of God in that uh, functioning family and that love that he has for us. So have a great rest of your day and look forward to greeting you in the back.